the biggest thing that I've seen just in the difference is probably the explosive playmaking over the first three days. It's being able to catch balls down the field um, and probably the run after the catch. I think that's been fantastic. You know, you see guys like Key, you see guys like Berto and Tanner. You know, we were making catches, but ultimately being able to generate extra yards, the hidden yardage, being able to turn, you know, 10-yard catches into 20 and 25s, um, that's been fantastic. And I think with the added weight, you know, the one thing that jumps out is being able to physically pass, protect, run block, control the line of scrimmage, and do some cool stuff there. So what do you think a guy like Key and Burnett can do this year after one year in the offense? I think just the comfortability of knowing where to go and now – being able to take a next step in terms of like why I'm doing things, how to anticipate things, how to manipulate coverage so I can create a little bit more separation. Um, I just see, you know, we always, coach speak is always, hey, it's the details, it's the details. Well, that's his details, knowing, hey, this is my route, this is the look that's being presented to me, and this is what I have to do to try and manipulate, you know, try and get the safety in a certain spot so I can create some space down the field. How beneficial was it for him to play with a guy like Tanner last year? Well, I think any time that you have somebody unique like a Tanner McLaughlin, um, you know, you just kind of look at it as, okay, how do I match and how do I try and do something that's a little bit better? How do I one up? And if you can continue that sort of competition from, you know, a guy like Roberto Miranda, who's doing a fantastic job in pass protection, that generates a lot of want to within the rest of the room. Hey, I can do that too. And then you just start to get better that way by internal competition. And then, you know, the cool thing about it is you see those guys talk on the sideline. It's not just a me, 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 it's ours. You know, it's a very, very collective group um, that's ultimately trying to get better in whatever facet, even if that is truly supporting their teammate when they're on the sideline. I think it's night and day. I think you just see a lot of comfort. You know, Roberto's a unique specimen. You know, anytime that you have to come through a couple knee season ending near injuries and then, you know, still have the trust, still have the explosion, still are able to generate a lot of agility, um, I think is unbelievable. I think it's a real testament to his mental fortitude and, uh, you know, how, how serious that he's taken the game. Because I think, you know, American football for him, you know, when he first started was very, very new. So being able to learn the nuances, learn offensive line calls, um, really dive in mentally, I think has been fantastic to see. Is there anything that's changed your life when you go on YouTube? When I go on YouTube? Yeah. Was there any, like when you Yeah, on, like, I, I'd say this, I'd say this is trying to find parental blocks now that my son knows how to pull up YouTube. <laughs> um, well, t with Tanner, he had the ACL injury. Sure. And then he went on YouTube and learned how to rehab. Sure. Like, how, how do you describe you know, that. Well, I think that's, you know, again, it's just a testament to him of, of how hungry, you know, I, I'm i not going to wait for somebody to help me out. I'm going to try and be proactive. I'm going to try and figure out how I can do things myself. And I think that's kind of the culture of the room. I think it's more of, hey, what can I do to not only help myself, but help the team? And how can I proactively get ahead of it? I think that's just what you kind of see with when you start to hear stories like that. What's the biggest improvement he made from the time he got here to Arizona to now? I think it's ultimately his understanding of the game. You know, I think there's been a big deal is, you know, Tanner at the end of the day, when you watch him run down the football field, is truly unique in terms of what he can do very naturally. Once he starts to figure out and really start to connect dots of why I'm doing things, and more importantly, how I can manipulate coverage looks, front looks, my motion landmarks to be able to try and create some space, I think it'll be really scary to try and cover him. Is there one of the things that Cam's been working on is one blocking right now? Where's he developing? I really think it's kind of just the fluidity and flexibility in his hips. You know, being able to bend, being able to sustain, I think is is a great word when you see Ken block down the field, block at the line of scrimmage. Um, you really get a sense of balance. You know, I think that's really helping him um, balance it and maintain and lower his center of gravity. But ultimately, I think at the end of the day, it's just the speed and agility because he's starting to understand why he's doing it and how he's doing it. Is there anyone at the so far special teams? Special teams-wise, I think it's just a collective, quite frankly. I think it's amazing to see guys like Jacob Manu, who, you know, again, uh, is a starting linebacker, still take the drills very seriously and very hungry. And I think that starts to get contagious. You know, DJ Warnell is always showing up. Dalton Johnson, obviously a big-time playmaker for us. But then you see guys like Justin Flo be able to step into some drill work and take it seriously. I think that just sets a precedent for what we want to be about. You know, our best players are ultimately going to play special teams and they're going to do it at a high level. 
as you start to get freshmen and that starts to become your culture, I think it's it's ultimately a big time deal. Oh, real quick, Jordan, I saw that Dwayne Aquina has been working with you on special teams. Yeah. What, what can you describe his impact and his presence? On well, I think it's just a wealth. I think it's just a wealth of knowledge. You know, you get a guy like Coach Aquina. What a blessing for us, first and foremost, to be able to a guy that's been at big time places and coached at the highest level, coached in the highest games. So anytime he gets to add just a different viewpoint or a different perspective, um, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's like you, you can only get better from that standpoint. And then selfishly, you know, Coach Aquino being from Hawaii as a Polynesian coach, just what he's been able to do at just in terms of the forefront of being able to, you know, be one of the first guys coaching the highest level as a Polynesian coach, as a young dude for me, um, you know, those are the guys that you emulate. And those are the guys when you get an opportunity to work with, you know, you, you try and learn as much as you can not only from a football perspective, but a personal perspective, and ultimately just kind of through the phases of life. Thanks, Thank you.